Back with closing trades in what's been another rock solid session for equity markets. Sure enough, we cooled off from the top of the day. At one point in time, we were less than 100 points away from the 15,000 mark in the Nifty. Better a day for the broader markets. Uh, and the one stock which really shone very smartly was Apollo Tires after its Q3 performance. Let me welcome on board Neeraj Kamar, the vice chairman and MD at Apollo Tires on the show. Neeraj, hi, good afternoon. Great to have you on the show. Give us a sense of... Uh, the pace of recovery, Neeraj, that one has seen within the entire industry, how are you placed right now as compared to the peak levels of 2018-19? Well, I think um, um, it's been a very positive quarter for Apollo. Uh, as you've seen, we've had a 20% jump in revenue. Uh, so the recovery has already started. Uh, as far as OEMs are concerned, we've seen quarter three from a very low base of CVs uh, uh, have increased by 15%. Uh, uh, in the passenger car segment, we've seen growth of 25%. And as you know, the farming industry has been doing very good. So uh, farms have uh, increased by nearly 60%. So the recovery has already started. There is a positive uh, movement as far as vehicle manufacturers are concerned. And as far as Apollo is concerned, uh, we've done our highest re revenue in the past uh, quarter that's gone by. Uh, and this has been because of the positive momentum that has come in, in the replacement market and in the OEM market in India. Right. Neeraj, what's driven the strong growth that one has seen in the third quarter from Apollo Tires? Uh, is the revival of the CV industry, the strong replacement demand intact? Uh, or would you attribute the strong operating performance to cost rationalization and fixing of capital efficiency matrix following the aggressive uh, capex that you had actually incurred? Well, I think it's a combination of both. As I mentioned to you, there has been substantial volume growth. Our plants are running at over 85 to 90 percent. So the utilization of the plants is much, much better and therefore our costs are coming down. Uh, there has been a lot of focus on fixed overhead costs uh, since COVID came in and we've seen uh, costs coming down dramatically. Uh, close to a double-digit figure, and that continues. It's a sustainable uh, cost drive that's uh, going on in the organization. Uh, the second drive has been on enriching product mix uh, and uh, uh, going to higher sizes in both in the passenger car segment and in the CV segment. As you know, we are clearly the leaders in the CV segment. In, in fact, in quarter three, we also achieved our highest milestone in passenger car tires in the replacement market. So given all of these uh, uh, initiatives that the company has taken, uh, the profit has been, uh, has been very, very positive. And I'm very bullish going forward also in Q4. We will see volume growth in India as we are seeing good OE uh, demand coming in. In the replacement market, we have already seen personal mobility uh, at an upswing. Uh, we have seen import restrictions coming in, and that's why there is a growth given to the domestic players. Uh, we've also seen a lot of government initiatives in infrastructure, in specifically mining. Uh, and so the CV segment has also started showing positive results. Right. Neeraj, you've seen a 700 BIPs expansion in your margins uh, on a year-on-year -year basis. But is this kind of a run rate really sustainable when it comes to your margins, given that raw material cost inflation as a fixed cost has started to come back uh, to normalcy as the economy further opens up? Well, margin is under pressure, uh, and rightly so, because of raw material prices are up. As we have seen in the world, crude oil uh, has reached uh, close to 58 to $60 a barrel. Uh, natural rubber is up at uh, nearly rupees 155 to 160 rupees a kilo. So commodity prices are up, but we at Apollo have already taken a price increase of nearly uh, 3% in the month of December. Uh, and so we will see a little bit uh, pressure on the margins, but we are correcting our prices as we go along. But as far as fixed costs are concerned, I want uh, you to understand that we have taken out bad costs and co this is one of the big learnings that we had in COVID, that we are able to take out our bad costs permanently, which are sustainable. Uh, so fixed costs in quarter two, 
two were down by 14%. I'm not saying that 14% is sustainable, but going along in the same direction with our focus on fixed costs, I believe we will be down by 10%. So the other factor that is going to give us margin expansion is going to be uh, volume growth. And as we know, today our uh, greenfield in Andhra, uh, which we started in the month of May 2020 during COVID, uh, has started ramping up very uh, effectively, is moving very smoothly. All of that production is going to come into the market. So an expansion of the new greenfield with uh, those products going into the market is also going to give growth uh, to EBITDA margins. What is it that you can tell us about the chatter from OEMs? Are they really uh, you know, ready to commit to future orders? How much visibility do you have there from this segment? Well, uh, it's a very positive uh, 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 trend that's going on. Like I said, in CVs, we've seen a 15% increase in vehicle manufacturers. We've seen close to 25% in um, uh, passenger cars and 60% in uh, rear in farm category uh, we continue to be bullish we uh, the the order books that we are getting from the oems for quarter four are even higher than quarter three uh, and then we are getting into a summer season which generally is a positive trend so oem is on the up yes obviously the base is very low uh, year on year cv is down by nearly minus 50 percent passenger car is down by nearly minus 20 percent uh, but farm is up by 15% year on year. But uh, Q4, we are seeing a more positive trend line uh, going upwards uh, when I compare it to quarter three. And what is the outlook, Mr. Kanwar, when it comes to agri, the passenger vehicle sales? Do you think that we are likely to see it go up further? Oh, yes, definitely. As I said, farm segment is doing very good. Um, uh, the crop is very good. The, the, the rains and monsoons have been very good. Uh, also, the government is supporting, uh, not now, but yes, there has been a, uh, uh, a lot of support that has come in the summer months uh, to the farm category. As far as passengers concerned, with COVID, there is a lot of increase in personal mobility. Uh, I also believe the rural market is a strength going forward, and specifically for Apollo, uh, we have opened uh, nearly more than 2,500 uh, networks in the rural market, which is also adding to the growth of not only passenger car segment and farm segment, but also the two-wheeler segment. But going forward, I also pretty optimistic about the CV segment because we are seeing a lot of freight movement happening, uh, primarily because of the infrastructure uh, focus that the government has given. And in the new budget, a lot of spends are happening in infrastructure. And therefore, I see uh, a lot of positive trend as far as uh, uh, CV segment is concerned in India. Right. And what is the outlook when it comes to the demand for new tyres versus replacement tyres? Where are you seeing the pricing power emerge? Can you quantify your replacement volume run rate as well as the kind of growth that's seen over the medium to long term in this segment? Well, in the replacement market, uh, we have grown tremendously in uh, truck. Uh, according to our estimates in truck, we've added close to uh, 300 basis points of market share. In passenger car, we have added close to 400 uh, basis points of market share. And in farm, we've added around uh, 500 basis points uh, on our market share. Uh, pricing power uh, is dependent on the brand and the technology that you're bringing in. And as you know, we are clearly the leaders now in the truck segment and in the passenger car segment. And that's why as leaders in the market, we have taken that 3% price increase in December. Uh, we will continue to watch uh, both the RM and uh, uh, the market itself in India and take corrective steps as we go along. All right. And uh, are you equally optimistic when it comes to the European markets as much as you're betting on recovery back home? Sure. But in quarter three, we've had, I would say, a handsome growth in our highest segment of the premium market, which is the ultra high performance tires in Europe, uh, where we've gained uh, 4% uh, growth and whereas the market had gone down uh, 3%. So uh, Fredestein with the brand is doing very good as far as Europe is concerned. Uh, but 
A word of caution, yes, there is a COVID second or a third wave that's come into Europe. So the market has come down. Uh, in fact, even winter has not been that good in Europe. So market trends are uh, a bit on the negative side. But as far as Apollo is concerned, we are making headways in our product mix where we are enriching our product mix and gaining much more than the markets. The market uh, fell around 16% year on year. Uh, whereas Apollo has only uh, fallen close to 9 to 10%. So there has been market share gains. The other good news on Europe is that uh, we had taken on this project of specializing our uh, Dutch plant in Enschede, which is going streamlined, which is going as per our plan. Uh, and our new investment into Hungary, which was done in 2017, is playing good, uh, is paying good dividends because the cost of manufacturing is coming down and therefore our products are becoming much more cost competitive and you've seen a margin expansion of uh, our European uh, European operations going from 9% EBITDA margin to nearly 13.1% EBITDA margin and that's a very handsome growth as far as Europe is concerned. All right, we'll let you go on that. Um, actually, just wanted to get in a view as to what the outlook is when it comes to your debt reduction because there has been a significant reduction in your overall debt from 6,000 crores, what we saw in the month of March, to 3,800 crores. What really aided your debt reduction? Well, I'm very happy uh, you know, you asked this question because the clear focus of the management has been on deleveraging our balance sheet. Uh, 6,000 coming down to 3,800 has been purely uh, a better cash management, a very tough capital cycle that we have seen in the year 2020, uh, and uh, a generation of a lot of free cash flows. Free cash flows still date has been close to 1,200 uh, crores. Uh, so that in itself has uh, reduced our uh, net debt EBIT. Uh, we opened the year at around 3.6. Uh, today, uh, we are at around 1.6 times. So all in all, it's a matter of focus in the organization. We are sweating our assets. All the CapEx cycle, heavy CapEx cycle has already been put in since the past three years. Now it's the time to consolidate ourselves internally and to really sweat our assets and get the utilization of all our plants up to 95% and then sell those products into the market. So that's the clear focus going forward to get our uh, rate on uh, our return on capital employed much better than what it is and really deleveraging our balance sheet. We read into the outlook on the budget, what was announced for the sector, scrappage, capex, revival, etc. Well, I think, you know, uh, the budget has been very positive for India. Um, uh, recently, IMF came up with 11.5% 11, 11 uh, GDP projection. And I think the, the government spends on infrastructure is very, very good. Uh, and that is going to boost our entire uh, industry. Also, uh, the voluntary scrap uh, scrappage policy for vehicles, both on cars and on trucks, is a very welcome uh, move by uh, the government. And it will help the industry, uh, not only the environment, it will also help the industry. So I'm pretty bullish going forward as far as uh, India is concerned. On that note, thanks very much for taking time out, Mr. Kanwar, and sharing with us your views on the earnings as well as the demand outlook and your view on the budget.